Trying to find a good audio setup can be overwhelming with all the different types of microphones out there with various price ranges and then all the extra accessories that you may need for those microphones. But what if there's an option out there that gives you everything you need for less than 100 bucks? This new offering from Comica might be just your solution. In this video, we're going to take a look at this microphone right here, which is a new offering from Comica Audio. It is the STA U2 Cardioid Condenser USB Microphone Kit. It is not a sponsored video, however, they did send me this to try out. So I'm going to go over some of the features of this microphone, and you can hear how it sounds throughout this video and some other features of it that might change the sound to your liking. So all audio will be coming from this microphone unless I note otherwise. No processing will be done in post but I will let you know if I have to raise or lower the gain at all, so that way you are getting the raw sound from this microphone without any processing done in post at all. So there are two kit options with this microphone. There is the STA U2A, which is this right here. It comes with the boom arm, or you have the U2D, which comes with a tabletop mic stand. So whether you wanna have a boom arm or you just wanna have the stand in front of you. Either way, you get everything you need to just plug this in and start recording. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up and see what all comes with the microphone. So on top here, you do have the Comica STA U2 mic itself. You get some instructions on how to get everything set up. And then you have this big pot filter that it comes with. And then underneath all this foam here comes with the shock mount and an adapter there to mount to different um, threads. We have the base plate for the boom arm, USB to USB-C wire here. So this will be the cord that goes to your computer and the microphone. We do have the boom arm, and then there are some cable ties as well for some cable management. So that's pretty much everything in the box and everything you need to get this thing set up. I really do like the way that this microphone boom arm mounts to your desktop. It does sit over on top of the desk where it actually mounts into the mount there. Unlike some of my other boom arms, like this one right here, where you see where it actually mounts in, is actually off of the desk. So it just doesn't feel quite as sturdy as this one here. And it does stay right in place so wherever you position it you don't have to worry about it falling or anything like that this is a rather light microphone too so it's not too heavy for this boom arm but it does stay in place wherever you move it and don't have to worry about it drooping or anything like that this kit does come with one cable for the microphone which i actually prefer instead of having two different ones it has an adapter on the end to where you have the USB-C option or if you want to plug it into a USB, you just pull this adapter over the USB-C and you can plug it in USB. So with my MacBook, that Air that I have it running into, USB-C ports are all being used right now, so I have to use dongles. So I can just use that USB adapter that it comes with and plug it right into that dongle, no issues. And then that way, even if I were to switch it and plug it directly into my computer, I don't have to change out the cord that's already installed on the boom arm. And it does come with these uh, cable management ties here to help keep the cable uh, attached to the boom arm and not look quite as messy. It is super easy to mount the shock mount to the boom arm and then mount the microphone to that. There's a screw at the bottom of the shock mount that actually screws into the bottom of the microphone. And having a shock mount is really great, especially with these condenser microphones. It does help in case you do accidentally hit the microphone. It's going to absorb some of the shock waves so it doesn't come through the audio or if you touch your desk. So let's go ahead and actually test out this shock mount real quick. So I'm just going to kind of hit the desk and see how it sounds. If, you're, if it's picking up anything, I'm going to go ahead and bump it, which you should hear a little bit of stuff in. And then I'm just going to move the boom arm around. So I'm interested to see how that comes out in the actual audio recording. I didn't hear much noise in my headphones. So this is an all metal construction mic and it does come with an all metal pop filter as well that mounts directly to the shock mount. And I really do like this pop filter that it comes with. It's not so big in your face, overwhelming in size. It fits nice. It is like a square shape and fits directly in front of the microphone. So it doesn't take up a whole lot of space or cover your face if you have it directly in front of you. So let's go over some of the features of this microphone. It is a 16 millimeter cardioid condenser mic and it does record in 48 kilohertz or 24 bit. So we'll actually go over some of the features of the, of the microphone starting on the front 
you'll see on the very top, it does have two different buttons and they're not physical buttons that you actually press, they're just touch buttons. And you do actually kind of have to put a little bit of force in touching those, otherwise it won't engage. But at the very top is a mute button that if you just press that, It'll meet your microphone without actually having an audible click that might show up in your recording. And below that is your sound preset button. So there's actually three different options. When it's not lit up like this, you're in just, I guess, the normal mode. But we'll give that one press. And then it goes directly into podcast mode. So this is what it sounds like in podcast mode. And then next is streaming mode. So if you want to get a streaming sound, if you're live streaming or in a gaming situation and you want to switch it over to this. This is what the streaming mode sounds like. And then it has this echo kind of a sound as well. I guess if you want to record vocals or use it for whatever effect you might want. But now we're back in normal mode. You'll see that the light is off. I do kind of like the podcast mode. It sounds like a little more, I guess, bassy and more like you would here on a podcast. So I'm gonna leave it in podcast mode for a little bit here as we go down to the control knobs. So the first one here is actually your gain control. So it has a stepless gain and all you have to do is just turn this knob to increase your gain. I have played around with it and found that about 10 o'clock is good for the way I have this mic positioned. So just play around with that. The one thing I wish this microphone did have is some sort of LED light so you could see the levels on the actual microphone. You can see it on your computer or GarageBand or whatever you're recording in. There's usually a meter that'll show you if you're clipping or not, but I would like to see it on a microphone. That way I'm not having to constantly look over at my desktop to see if I'm hitting those peaks or not. And just below that is the knob to control the volume of your headphones. So this microphone does have real time audio monitoring. So if you do have some headphones with a 3.5 millimeter jack, you just plug it into the back of the microphone here, and then you can monitor in real time the audio that's coming out of this microphone. One thing I've noticed is that I do have to have that almost maxed out so I can hear uh, myself through these headphones, but I'm kind of deaf, so. That's my issue. You might not have to have it cranked up so loud or even want it so up so loud. And then you don't even need to have headphones. Once you get it set and you know your levels are good, you can take your headphones off if you want to. I just like to have them in and that way I'm making sure that the audio I want is coming through here. On the back of the microphone, again, is your headphone jack. And then right above that is your control for the RGB lights. So this is an RGB microphone and you can see it right here, just a subtle ring that goes around the microphone just under the buttons for the presets. And there are six different RGB modes that you could play around with. And then you can turn that off if you want to. So we'll just kind of cycle through here. Now this button does have an audible click. So I'm interested to see if it does pick up on the audio, if you can hear me cycling through these, but this is what it looks like off and then we'll turn it on. I think it just kind of adds a cool little visual effect, nothing too crazy, because there are some uh, microphones that have some crazy RGB that just gets too uh, overwhelming and distracting. This is nice and subtle. And on the very bottom of the microphone is the USB-C port where you plug in your cord. And then the cool thing about this microphone is not only can you plug it into your computer and record from there, you can also plug it into your smartphone or iPad or tablet and if record directly into say GarageBand or any other application that might do audio recording. So you're not strictly um, relying on having to plug it into a laptop. You have so many other ways you can do and then just record the video from you know, your camera or even your phone if you want to do that. So like I said, this is a pretty light microphone. It does, It is not very heavy compared to like a short SM7B that is a pretty heavy microphone. It tends to weigh down some boom arms. This one, even if you don't use this boom arm, maybe use something else if you bought the desktop version, mounting it to any boom arm should be able to hold this mic. Now we'll go back into normal mode so you can hear what it sounds like without any of the presets that are on here. One thing I do want to see is kind of what the self noises or what it picks up uh, when everything is silent. It should pick up some room noise. This is just an office in our house. Not really the best sound treatment or anything. What it might pick up is there is a fan on the light right here. So it may pick that up. I don't think it's been picking that up while I talk, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking and see what it picks up. And just to see if it changes in podcast mode, 
So we're in podcast mode. So I'm going to see if anything picks up in this preset. Now, I don't hear anything in my headphones. I don't know if this is going to be picking up. I'm interested to see in post. Let me know if you guys hear any room noise or anything, or if it does sound pretty quiet to you. Again, there should be a slight fan noise coming from this light right here, but otherwise I don't have an AC running right now or anything. So the room should be pretty quiet other than the fan right here. So we're back in the normal mode and I want to try out the plosive test with this pop filter here. So I'm going to try it with the pop filter in kind of two different ways. So I'm going to do it directly into the microphone as if it were like right in front of me like this. And then how I like to keep it is off to the side. So that way the wind coming out of my mouth isn't going directly into the microphone. That way it reduces some of the breathing that you may hear me make or even also help with those plosives. So I'm going to go ahead and with the pop filter, Peter Piper pitched a podcast. And now off to the side, Peter Piper pitched a podcast. Now to take this off, you just kind of pull it off here. Hopefully that wasn't too noisy. So Peter Piper pitched a podcast or Peter Piper pitched a podcast. So this is what it sounds like without the pop filter. I'm kind of talking directly into the mic. And that's how you want to talk into it is the mic will be facing you, the gain controls and everything is basically the front of the microphone. So you do want to talk into the front. Again, I like to talk slightly off to the side so that way the wind's not going in it. But this is what the microphone sounds like without the pop filter. And we'll just go ahead and put that back on there. It just slides right onto the shock mount. So here we go again. Peter Piper pitched a podcast. So it does sound like it does do a decent job with the plosives unless you're like right in front of it and just making those pop. I like to stay about, you know, six inches away from the microphone. That way it's not too overbearing and you're not getting too crazy with those pops, especially if you decide to talk a little bit louder, if you get excited about something. So I do want to do some microphone comparisons with this one. I'm not even going to try to compare it to the Shure SM7B like some people like to do. It's just not fair. That is a dedicated XLR microphone. If you're buying something like this, you're not looking at the Shure SM7B because that, with that, you have to have an audio interface and that's an XLR. So that is completely different. So I'm going to compare it to the microphones that I have that are USB-C capable. And that way you can plug them in directly to your computer and use them without an interface. So let's go ahead and pull up some other microphones right now. So the first microphone comparison, I have the Fine Fine K688. It is a dynamic microphone, so that's going to be the main difference. But it is going directly into the computer through the USB port, just like the Comica. So you'll see I do have the XLR cable just hanging there. So it is going through my computer. So the one thing about this microphone, it it is kind of dual capable. So it does have the USB-C port that you can plug into the computer or your tablet or phone, but it does have an XLR port as well in case you do want to run it through an interface like this Rodecaster Pro. Um, that's how I primarily used it. But if you don't have the interface, you can use that USB port going into your computer. Now with this being a dynamic microphone, it captures more of what's in front of it. So you'll see I'm talking to, into the very top or front of this microphone. And so it's gonna capture my voice more from the front and help cancel out what's around me. So if you do have a lot of room noise, this might help block some of that out. Whereas with the Comica, since that is a condenser microphone and you're gonna be talking directly into the front, it is going to pick up some more of the room noise that you have going on. So if you are in a louder area, you may hear more of the background noise using a condenser microphone than with a dynamic. So that's one thing to consider when you're trying to decide on a microphone, kind of consider what environment you're recording in and go from there. You can fix some of that in post, but it isn't gonna sound the same as using a like a dynamic microphone or something else that's gonna help reduce some of that noise. All right, so now we are back on the Comica microphone in the normal mode, so you can see what it sounds like compared to the Fafine K688, that dynamic microphone sound. So again, this one is a condenser mic, so it does sound a little bit different, and this is again in normal mode, and we'll see if in podcast mode, if it does sound any closer to that Fafine microphone or not. So again, this is the Comica, and we'll go ahead and switch over to our next comparison.
So this next microphone right here is a Samsung Q2U, which is another dynamic microphone. Great under $100 option. I think these are going for about $60 now, and they come with about everything that you need to plug and play as well. It does not come with the boom arm. It comes with a cheap tabletop stand, which I've never really used, but it does come with a USB XLR cable and the pop filters. So it does come with basically everything that you need, just not the boom arm but the benefit of the Comica is you do get the option to get the boom arm, which is nice because that would be an additional cost with this microphone or even the fine find that we just saw. Again, this one does have the inputs at the back to where you can just plug in your headphones and monitor directly from the microphone, which I'm doing right now. Again, you can see I have it going into my computer. I don't have the XLR input selected. So changing the microphone on your computer is super easy. I was able to just stop uh, in GarageBand and then I just selected the new microphone when I plugged it in. So you can actually change microphones. You just have to press stop. Um, I do have the video going through Ecamm Live as well, so I have to uh, change it in there. But if you do want to switch between microphones in the middle of recording something, you can do that. You just have to make sure you select the right one that you want to use. But again, this is a Samsung Q2U. I have another video on this one as well. I'll post a link up here if you're interested in checking that out as well. So we are back on the Comica microphone. So now you can hear what it sounds like compared to that Samsung Q2U. And I have one more microphone that I have that is USB capable, and this one will actually be more of a fair comparison because it is a condenser mic as well. But now we'll switch over to the next mic. So the next microphone up is the Blue Yeti X. I know the Blue microphones have had some haters out there, but I really like the X version here. It looks really good, I think. It comes on this nice stand. You are able to take this tabletop stand off and mount it to a boom arm. I just didn't feel like taking the time to do that. Um, so this is another condenser microphone, although it does have some different pickup patterns that you can do. So you can do it in um, omnidirectional, and then you can also get it to where if you're talking to somebody, um, you can both use the mic on either side. So I'm not gonna go over those. If you wanna check out all the features of, the, of this microphone, I got a video review on this, but it is pretty cool. I use this all the time for work because you can also monitor your audio directly from this microphone as well. And what this one has that I wish the Comica had is I'll turn it around so you can see, it has LED monitoring lights on the actual microphone right above the gain dial. So I can actually see if I'm peaking and if I am, I can go ahead and turn the gain down and see that it's not going into that yellow. So that is one thing, again, I wish the Comica had is even just these LED lights above the knob so you can see what your levels are right in front of you without having to look over at your computer all the time. And then again, with this one, all you have to do is just click that button, press it in, and then you can change the volume of your headphones. The one pain point that has been changing out all these microphones is they have all used different cables. Um, that's the one good thing about the Comica is everything seems to be going to the USB-C. So that is nice to have and with future products, whereas these microphones have been out for a while. So the inputs that actually go into the bottom of the microphone are all different but they do have the USB port on the ends of them, but they don't have the USB-C option to plug in. So then you'll have to get an adapter or anything if you want to plug it into the USB-C port of your computer. Otherwise get a dongle or something like that. That is an advantage that the Comica has with that USB-C and the adapter already at the end of that microphone. So again, this is the Blue Yeti X and basically the same setup uh, pattern that you would get on the Comica. So let me know how this one sounds compared to all the other ones. All right, so we are back on the Comica. I will go ahead and turn it into normal mode. So we're back on normal mode of the Comica. So this is the raw sound of the Comica compared to that blue Yeti X that we just heard. So let me know which one you think sounded the best. I think they all sound good. Me personally, I like the dynamic microphones if I'm doing a podcast. If you're doing just a video and maybe want the microphone slightly further away from you, then you kind of want to go condenser. The one thing that I've noticed about a lot of condenser microphones is they tend to be bigger, especially with the pop screens. So keep that in mind, but this one is nice. It's not overbearing. And if you do have it off to the side, it's not going to cover your face, which is nice. So really, who is this microphone for? Well, if it's somebody that's just getting started into say a podcast or even doing videos, and you don't want to take the initial leap and investment into getting a dynamic microphone and audio interface, boom arms and all this stuff. You just want something simple, comes in the kit and can plug right into your computer and go from there. 
then this, this is definitely it. Whether you get this version with the boom arm or the tabletop mic stand, you basically have everything you need to start recording, which is extremely nice because audio stuff can get really expensive. This is how I started with a USB microphone, and then I jumped into the uh, you know audio interface XLR style microphones once we started recording several podcasts and knew we were going to keep that going. So a couple things I do wish this microphone had was the capability of maybe having an XLR port on there as well. So you could use this in an XLR format with an interface if you do eventually go that way. And then again, the LED light to monitor the audio levels on the microphone itself would be nice too. Not a game changer. Um, you can monitor it on your computer, but then again, you have to look either to the side or at your computer right there. Not a huge deal, but it is. it was nice looking at that Blue Yeti X, just being able to see it right in front of me. I really don't have any complaints about the build quality. It seems pretty well made. Everything's pretty much middle. The only plastic that I have noticed is the actual shock mount itself, the ring um, around the shock mount. That really seems to be the only plastic part on here. Um, everything else is pretty much a lightweight metal. So that's nice to have a metal build quality instead of uh, plastic because nobody wants a plastic microphone because they just feel cheap at that point. So, And then the boom arm is made of metal as well and does feel that it does have a good quality. If you do get this kit with the boom arm, it does look like they are going to have an option for an all white. So you're going to get an all white microphone and also a white boom arm, which you don't see too much of. So if you want something different, maybe to stand out, they will have that white option available for you as well. If you guys have any questions on this microphone or any of the others that we did the comparisons to, let me know down in that comment section. I'll try and answer those if I can. I will post a link in the description below to this microphone. Right now, they just have the desktop version available. This one will soon come out. So they'll, once that comes out, I'll post a link to that one as well. They are available on Amazon. Comica does have them on their website, but you can't actually buy them off of Comica's website. You do have to purchase these off their Amazon store. But if you're still undecided, on what microphone you may want check out these other videos here where we go over a bunch of different types of microphones and do a lot more comparisons